Well, I finally managed to complete the wings. I've got to say, they've taken me a lot longer than I actually anticipated. Uh, it's like the whole kit itself, the engineering is, is superb. The fit on the whole is superb. But what I found was the wings themselves go together great. And the wings, you have the two parts of the wing and also includes parts of the engine nacelle. Now the engine nacelle is made up of three parts. The top part, a bottom left and a bottom right. And I found, as I believe many modelers on uh, YouTube or the guys who try to build it have found, if you want to get the best fit you can on the top here, you, you have a compromise and you're left with a huge gap under here. In fact, if I just show you under the wing there, you can see the actual gap that I was left with. It's quite, it's quite significant. Um, so I ummed and ahed and I toyed and I messed around for quite a long time trying to get a compromise between the gap at the bottom and the gap in the top here and ultimately I just thought sod it I'll get the best um, joint that I can at the top and worry about the gap on the bottom at a later date and that's what I did and it was the same for both wings um, I toyed with the idea of filling the gap with plastic card and then trying to cut a profile and I thought that's going to be an absolute nightmare so at the end of the day all I did I just used my super glue with rubber compound Filled it with that fairly spare, sparingly. Uh, used a, um, a toothpick to apply it as, as sparingly as I could, really. Let that harden, uh, sanded it back, gave it a coat of um, Mr. Surfacer 1200, let that dry back, show any blemishes, um, refill as required, sand it back, reapply Mr. Surfacer. And I probably did that four or five times before I actually had a seam that was good enough to rescribe. Um, to be honest with you, it was a bit of a belly nuisance. Uh, the same went, was the same for the join here. Again, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't brilliant either. So I so I filled it with the uh, the super glue and rubber compound, sanded it back, and rescribed it. Um, the actual look of it now, I think, isn't too bad. Um, I made a bit of a, a faux pas here. As you can see that black there is again it's rubber compound and super glue. Um, I had to fill. I tried to uh, rescribe freehand, you think I would have learnt by now, made a bit of a noise of it, so I had to go back, refill it, sand it and rescribe it, which I did this morning. And the actual um, line itself, if I should just show you quickly, let's get my, get my eyes on so I can see. Now if I run the scriber across it, you can see that um, the scribe line itself is below that black line, so when I can paint it now, hopefully it'll look pretty clean and pretty good. Um, I rescribed obviously the panel line underneath the uh, between where the, the wooden portion of the nacelle meets the metal um, and this is a tip I picked off picked up from Nigel's modeling bench actually because obviously there's quite a lot of filler in here even though it's super glue what I do want to do I do want to risk um, scribing onto um, putted areas because you, you can you're either going to rip out the putty you're gonna it's, it can cause you all sorts of problems so what I did as you can see I actually rescribed about half a mil or a mil forward of where I needed to be purely to make sure that I was scribing onto virgin plastic and it actually turned out okay I'm sure if I hadn't shown you that um, area that I'd uh, rescribed you probably wouldn't know um, looking at it now it stands out like a dog's doodars but hey it's a compromise I'm willing to make. Um, so yeah, the actual wings themselves, the panel lines turned out okay. There's a seam along here, there's a seam along here, and I think with a bit of paint on them now, they'll look okay. Um, yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the port wing. The starboard wing was exactly the same. I had the same issues in all the same areas. Um, Rescribing, like I say, isn't my thing, but I think under a, a, a coat of paint, it'll look okay. Um, my intention now, I'm gonna paint interior green on the landing light here. I've used the, uh, the mask again from CT Mask just to cover the light themselves. So I'm gonna spray interior green over, over the landing light. Um, and also I'm just gonna touch up the, um, the uh, wheel wells and the, the engine, um, what do you call bearers inside, so a little bit of overspray. I was a bit, um, a little bit haphazard with my, uh, application of the surfacer but I thought it's, it's easy to touch up. So I'll any, any areas that got to overspray I'll just give those a squirt of uh, XF71. 
mask them properly, and then I'll start applying the uh, the training yellow. But no, I think the actual, even though it's taking me longer than I would have liked to put the wings together and actually get them to a stage where I think, yeah, they'll look okay. I think the actual the, the extra bit of work is actually worth it. And I think with the engines on, with the engine installed and the actual uh, engine cowlings, they'll, get, they'll look really, really good. Um, speaking of the engines, I have those here. Again, they're lovely little little things by themselves. Very straightforward to put together. Very easy to paint. That's just XF1 and silver. Um, I put the engine together first, in, in, uh, totally together, and then I then I painted them by brush. And you can see they look great. There's a bit of a, a grime wash on there. But other than that, I haven't done anything clever with them. And that's the other engine is exactly the same. And I think once they're installed on the, on the, on the model themselves, they will look absolutely great. So my plan now is, like I say, spray some interior green onto the landing lights, interior green into the engine nacelles, let that dry, make sure I'm happy with the seams, the seams that I've done and my rescribing, um, and then I'll spray uh, in training yellow on the undersurface, let that go off, mask it off, spray the camouflage on the, on the top surface, and also when I spray the camouflage I'll do any tidy up tidy what I need to do with the fuselage itself because as you know I had a few issues um, and then really we're almost on to the final hurdle I think uh, I've still got the undercarriage left to do uh, the uh, turret I've still still, uh, still to do um, what else have we got yeah and all the little greeblers that need to uh, to go on but I'm going to go away now saying so spray the XF71 on the glass and the seams and we see how we get on well, we're now two weeks down the line and I've finally managed to get camo on the wings. I've got the decals uh, on both the fuselage and the wings as you can see. Uh, it's had a gloss coat, it's had a, a um, satin varnish and yeah, I'm actually very very happy with how she's going. I risked using the Vallejo model air paints once again and I've got to say this time following your guys advice and actually using the uh, Vallejo flow enhancer uh, it's gone on beautifully, low pressure, absolutely no problems at all. The green was still the uh, Tamiya XF81, uh, it's, just a nice, it's just a nice green, so I thinned that, that, that down with um, Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. Um, but the, the Vallejo paint, like I said, I just used a little drop of their Flow Enhancer, low pressure, it went on really well. For the camo itself, I just did the blue tack method, nice and straightforward, nice and simple. And I think you'll agree, she looks absolutely cracking. The decals from Airfix, or from Cartograph I should say, went on easily. Oh, the engine I think looks absolutely superb, looks really really good, just give you a little shot of that. Uh, the masking set from CT Productions, again they were absolutely fab, if I just show you the, uh, the fuselage here, you can see how good does that look. I've got a few little touch ups to do, but overall I really couldn't be any happier. Um, yeah, the yellows turned out well. It's just going very, very well. Uh, what can I say? The um, I'm gonna have to touch up the uh, recognition lights. Actually, looking at the video, you can you can actually see them, but with the naked eye, they're quite um, they're not very pronounced. So I'll probably go over those just to make them a bit more uh, pronounced. But other than that, she's going really well. Still to do, I've still got to do the uh, the copula for the um, the gun, the gun turret, that's still ongoing. Um, the uh, engine cowlings, I've still to finish those. Undercarriage, as you see, you can see I've still got the, the packing in there. I've still to finish off the undercarriage. Propellers, they're still to be done. All of the, uh, the antenna, any aerials, any rigging, I still need to do that. I'm gonna show you guys the old stretch sprue. Uh, technique for doing the um, the control arms for the uh, for the uh, aerolons. Um, yeah, so all in all, she's going really, really well. If I just show you the uh, the other wing, you can see the landing lights there. They look absolutely great. We'll sort of, now the mass have been removed, and again, the engine looks good. Um, all in all, very, very, very happy. Uh, Airfix has done a great job of this of this model. Um, and I, yeah, I'm really, really chuffed with how it's going. Uh, at the end of the video, I will take some photographs of the uh, model just uh, put together. You know, the wings themselves, I, as you're probably aware from, how, from what I'm showing you, I've deviated from the Airfix instructions and uh, I cut off the locating tabs on both wings. 
So basically all, all you need to do is very straightforward. You can just grab the wing and you can just really just slide it on. I'm not going to force it all the way now, but you, they, they do just slide on really, really easily. And the actual, um, there's very minimal seam seam line between the wing and the fuselage and the same for underneath. So I'm really happy with how that's gone. And I'm glad I took that route. But I'm sure, you, I'm sure you'll all agree that she's looking great and well done Airfix. She looks like an Anson, um, well engineered model and I'm really really happy with the uh, the overall effects and just looking at the, uh, the cockpit there that looks great too doesn't it look at that lovely stuff okay guys I'm gonna leave it there for now uh, the next video will be the uh, the last video basically I'll just be showing you how I paint the, uh, the canopy sorry the uh, glazing for the uh, the gun turret painting the gun turret the undercarriage and the, the, the wheels and the like and then after that my friends it will be the uh, the final reveal well thanks for your time take care and I'll see you all very very soon